Today, I want to talk to you about the art of miscommunication. Today, like I said, I want to talk about the art of miscommunication. And you guys, I am so, so good at miscommunicating. Like, let me tell you, I do this a lot. Like, I'm trying to do something really beautiful and encourage people and in ending up with the opposite result. And that's really painful for me because I'm usually coming from a place, or at least I think I'm coming from a place of love. And then all of a sudden, someone's reacting to me in a way that I was not expecting because I didn't see that what I was saying could come across any differently. And so let me tell you guys, like, I really think that I might be the most misunderstood person in the world. But me and my brain are working on that. And that is just a thought of mine because I'm sure a lot of you have felt misunderstood at some point. So really, it's just I think I'm the most misunderstood person. And that could possibly not be true. I might just think that I am sometimes. So I hope that my point comes across in this video. My intention is definitely to promote love and encourage people to... Um, use their, observe their brain, really, and kind of understand what's going on and when their thoughts are interfering and what that's doing for their overall well-being. So something that's been really interesting for me lately has been how much I really do, I care about the way that people are treating each other online um, during this whole pandemic situation that we are in. And how many people are kind of just judging each other for their choices. And so I sometimes I get a little involved and I post things trying to promote love and acceptance of other people, even though we don't think that what they're doing is right. And so it kind of turns out to be devil's advocate sometimes because I'm fighting for the little guy. And but what I'm trying to do is I post information that is the opposite of what I'm used to seeing to kind of just remind people that there is some other information out there that we might be missing. And I also word my commentary in a way that I at least think is explaining that I'm posting this to share a different point of view intentionally in hopes that we can all calm down and stop being mean to each other. And apparently... It's been coming across as I'm on this person's side and I'm defending all the people who don't give a shit about the virus and I am i don't give a shit about the virus and, and this is completely not true at all. Um, so I'm sorry if you've been reading something of mine that's come across that way. I do feel that it is important for us to follow instructions to an extent and socially distance and be careful. And I might not be as extreme as some of the social distancers. Like, I know some people who have literally not left their house in like a month. I have no idea how they do that. I eat fresh produce all the time. It is not possible for me. Um, but I also am not on the other extreme of like, let's just go party with 100 people. Who cares a shit? Who cares if people die? Like, no, I'm neither of those. So I enjoy, but I enjoy looking at other opinions and looking at the other side of what I believe without automatically injecting my thoughts about what's right into it. Because whenever there's a situation where there's information on both sides of the argument, I don't feel like it's possible to make a completely right choice. Um, I don't really know if there is a right. So I think people are really just making the best decisions for themselves and whether or not their decision looks like it's all heroic and everything, like really you're just making the best decision based on the information that we have. You're making the decision that you think is best. So we all are just people making decisions and sometimes for people, they don't like the other people's decisions, right? So in noticing this, I've been ending up in a couple of arguments on Facebook just by accident. And it really breaks my heart because I'm not, I'm really not an argumentative person. My mother would totally disagree with that. 
because I do like to debate things. But to me, there's a difference between arguing and debating. Um, And whenever it starts to feel personal and whenever I feel misunderstood, it just feels so awful Especially when people assume that I am just kind of being an asshole and I'm not trying to be at all or when I'm agreeing with the side of... Anyways, you get my point. So because I'm really trying to do something great and loving and when someone jumps in and thinks I'm doing something bad, it feels terrible. So I'm excellent. I'm really excellent at not getting my point across and miscommunicating my intention. And I've had several confrontations with friends recently that brought this to my attention as well and it's been really very painful to swallow because for people that do know me I'm a loving accepting person most of the time (laughs) and you know maybe sometimes it's a little too much because and um, I'm kind of a people pleaser which is the part that I'm working on because in the process of losing my people pleasing tendencies um, I don't want to recluse and lose my big heart. So I want to be okay with not, you know, everyone's not going to be happy, but I don't want that to cause me to think that I have to hide or stop loving people, which I don't. It just sometimes feels that way when I feel attacked. So working on my side of things, but when we are all stuck in this quarantine and doing silly things to pass the time, some things that used to be on Facebook are coming back up again, like some old things that passed by, you know, several years ago. And I know most of you have probably heard of them already, but they're coming back up because we're all bored. So um, I know most of you probably heard of the Laurel Yanny recording where there's this recording of some kind of tone and half of the people are hearing the word Laurel and half of the people are hearing the word Yanny. And it seems like no matter how hard the other people try, they can't, they usually can't hear both. I think I had one friend that said they, they were able to hear both, but I noticed that most people really just try and try and try and they cannot They hear what they hear. And another one is the blue and gold dress illusion that we saw several, several years ago. I don't remember the actual year, but like some people saw this, saw a blue dress and some people saw a gold dress. And now there's a shoe going around that I've never seen before, but apparently it's an old thing. And I asked several of my friends what color they see. And we all see different colors like I saw pink and white and someone else saw gray and turquoise and someone else saw green and blue and like someone else saw gold and white so like this stuff absolutely fascinates me right because not only do we all have a completely different background a completely different upbringing a completely different perspective of the world which is really just made up of our thoughts about our circumstances we've experienced But not only all of that, we can also hear or see the same words and speak the same language and hear or rather think something completely different. And to me, this just proves how differently we interpret things. So even if we speak the same language, what one person gets out of what I'm saying is going to be completely different than what another person gets out of what I'm saying and Both of those things could be completely different than what I'm trying to say, right? I just think that's absolutely fascinating. And I think it's something to think about. And of course, it's really hard when we're having an emotional moment to sometimes to stop and think, right? Like it can be difficult when we're just feeling emotional immediately to remember to stop and think that, hey, maybe it's not what I think it is. So, like, that's something I have to work on, and I know a lot of people need to work on that because it's very easy uh, to react, especially in text messages. Like, you see it, and before you can even stop and breathe, your fingers are already typing while you're still in that, (gasps) how dare they phase, you know? Like, before you can even stop and take a step back, you're like... You've reacted. It's there for the universe to see. Of course, you can delete it, but sometimes people see it before you can get to that. So, like, 
it can be hard when we're in that moment to remind ourselves to stop and think. But you just like, you've already sent the comment. You've already sent the text or whatever. So I'm not saying that this is going to be something easy at all. It's just something that I would really like to see more of um, in myself and in others because it's so easy, especially when we have our own hurts and things and stories that we've told ourselves and manuals for life that we follow that basically aren't even true. Well, like they're true for us, but are really just something that we came up with us with our own minds with our own experience like this is the experience we had and this is what we thought about it and then over time we developed these ideas and manuals for life that we just have and we just had a thought and then we proved that thought to ourselves over and over and over. And then we think other people should also live up to this idea that we have for life. Like we've made, this is what life is. This is how it should be, period. And like that's our, that's our manual, right? And I think what needs to happen is we really need to be open to the fact that it is just our thoughts, And it's possible that our thoughts could be wrong. And trust me, that's hard for me too because I love being right and thinking that it's possible that I'm wrong about something I have believed for my whole life is just sometimes like way too much to process. So I throw out all the reasons and supposed evidence as to why it's right for me and shut down. I'm like, no, no, no. This is what I believe. Like, I don't care if you agree with it because this happened and this happened and this happened and this happened and therefore this. Like, this boyfriend cheated on me and then this boyfriend cheated on me and then this person said this mean thing to me and then this person stopped being my friend and nobody loves me and I'm right. (laughs) Like, do you want to be right about that? So, I think it's possible... But you see, like, we shut down because if we have this belief and someone's attacking that belief in a way that's not really allowing room for discussion, it's basically just saying your belief is wrong, like, we're not going to open up and try to believe something different, even if what we believe hurts. And I really do think it's possible to change those thoughts, but if someone approaches me and labels my opinion as stupid where I see people talking down about people who believe the same thing as me online, I have already shut down and have no interest in hearing what these people have to say. Like, boom, that just like that, my defenses are up. I'm ready to fight. I am no longer hearing anything that the fact, other than the fact that they think I'm stupid and I don't think that I'm stupid and it also hurts to hear such things. So I'm not going to be open to their opinion, right? Like, Do we all kind of think like that sometimes? If someone's already automatically labeling us, well, our defenses are going to go up. We're not going to want to talk to them. We're already going to react defensively, and there's no room for discussion. But where does that take any of us? So I have to bring up this coronavirus situation. I know, like I know, I'm ready for this to all just be over too, we're all in this together, but I really want to bring this up, because this is the situation we are in right now, this is the current reality, and I think it's very applicable to my point here of wanting to show how easy it is for us to miscommunicate and think differently. So going back to what I just said about shutting down, if someone has already formed an opinion of me that I am stupid... When we are already boxing people up into these boxes because we think it's quite obvious that these people should not be protesting that things are opening back up or when we think that people choosing to stay inside are sheep and basically essentially stupid for following what the media is telling us, we are losing ourselves. We are losing the ability to change. We're creating hate. And situations that continue to promote the thing that we're complaining about. Like, do we want, obviously, ideally, we just want the other person to change, right? Like, all the people that think the people are out, all the people that think everyone who's going out in groups 
still is stupid. And all the people that think all the people who are hiding inside their house are stupid. Like, we all want the other side to change, essentially, right? Because we think that if they just change, things would be okay. And that's not really what needs to change. What needs to change is our thoughts about it because we are not allowing any room for love by thinking that we are right. Okay, like we are creating hate in situations that just continue to promote this behavior, labeling, hating, shaming, blaming. I don't care what side you are on. I really don't. It's how you are treating the people who have a different opinion than you. And I'm I'm guilty of this, too, guys. I am not just talking at you. I am totally in this with you. We have all done it. We're all human. We all make mistakes. But when we are labeling people and hating and blaming, we are only creating more of the same. Like these actions do not serve any of us, period. Like end of story, whether we are right or they are right or neither of us are right, calling each other names and implying that people are stupid and ignorant and inconsiderate just creates more defensiveness, more of the same, and it serves no one It only causes fights and hate. Like, that's it. Is that what we want? Like, if you want more stupid people and you want more ignorant people and you want more fighting in the world, like, sure, okay, you're doing the right thing. Good for you. But I don't, I don't believe that that's what we truly want in our heart of hearts. I think that we're just all angry because we don't know what to do when someone disagrees with us. And what I would like to see more of is taking a step back and remembering that remembering these little exercises that we do on Facebook, like Laurel Yanny and the shoe and the gold and white, blue, whatever dress, like take a step back and remember these because these just prove how impossible it is to completely understand each other. And it's so easy to label someone stupid or ignorant or inconsiderate when all we are seeing is this laser focus on this one thing that they did that we think is wrong. And what's really happening here is we are observing someone say or do something. And then this part is the part we're not observing. In our own mind, we are making whatever that person is doing or saying mean something And then therefore we are taking the action of calling them stupid or whatever. Like we've decided in our head that what they're doing means this, therefore they are stupid. Right? Like one of the things I've seen that's going around, this one's just really kind of a joke and I'm not offended by it at all, but it's an example is a lot of people are, laughing at the people who are wearing masks in their car. And I'm one of those people. Why? Because I have to wear a mask at my job. And thank God I still have a job. I am so fortunate because I was going to lose my home if I didn't. Um, I got super lucky in this whole situation. But I wear a mask in my car because I have to wear a mask to work. And I totally forget that it's on. But... You see how, like, someone's already thinking, oh, this person's wearing a mask in their car. They're terrified. Therefore, they're stupid because I don't think that we should be terrified. And by them wearing a mask in their car, that means that they're terrified. Does it? No, I'm not terrified. I'm just taking a precaution because my job asked me to. So this is my point. We make something, people do something, And then we make that mean something, and that's what's causing us to react and call them names. But we're not remembering to observe the thought that we are having about what they're doing. So it's so easy to judge people and just put them in a box and, you know, so we can organize them in our own mind, right? Like, that's just a natural human thing to do. But I want to invite you all to push through that, because when we're feeling feelings like that around somebody breathe and push through it and see if you can continue talking to them in a way that benefits both of you because obviously calling them a name 
and pushing your opinion on them does not benefit both of you. If you really want to understand them, you've got to be able to step, step back from the emotional part. You've got to be able to consider your thoughts in the situation. And um, I just want to encourage us all to like maybe ask more questions before we decide what something means. See if you can ask questions that make you understand better before you decide that they're stupid because they should already know this and they should already know that and they shouldn't be doing that. Like, ask them in a non defensive provoking way like why maybe we will learn something and if we can all look at these pictures and see completely different colors and we can hear this recording and hear two different sounds coming from the same recording obviously our brains all function and interpret things differently and even if I say one sentence it could mean a million different things to a million different people so I just think that that's something to take into consideration when we are scrolling Facebook and seeing pe people posting things that might trigger an emotion for us that's not so good. And I just want to encourage you, and I'm including myself in this as a reminder, just because I say you does not mean I'm talking to just you. I'm talking about all of us because we're all humans. I just want to encourage, it's just easier sometimes to use you. So I just want to encourage you to stop and question yourself and question what are you thinking about this person's post or this person, this thing the person said or did. What are you thinking about what that person is saying that is making you feel angry or upset or desiring to judge them or condemn them for what they did? Like what thought are you having? And I think if we could all do something like that, it would really give us a lot more insight into ourselves and also potentially open up a door to create some more understanding. Because sometimes someone's intention and what someone is getting out of it is completely different. And let me tell you, like when someone misunderstands you and you take it personally like I do sometimes, because it's happened so many times and it breaks my heart to hear that someone thinks I'm mean, like I said earlier, um, when I don't think I'm mean, or at least I don't want to be mean, it can create a really like uncomfortable, intense environment if your automatic reaction is something negative. And then, of course, it can also create an awful situation to be in if someone says something to you in response and you take it personally like I have several times in the past because then I can blow up and think that they're attacking me and think that they're judging me and calling me something that I'm not. And it's really hard to deal with those emotions. Sometimes that feeling that comes with thinking we are misunderstood, it's unbearable. <laughs> Especially when we feel really lonely and all we want to do is get along with people. So totally, totally understandable why we do what we do. We are all humans and we all want acceptance and we all want to be right. And we all have a fight, flight or freeze response to situations in where we feel threatened. And it's very easy to feel threatened in a situation where people disagree with something that you wholeheartedly believe right? And we all want to be right. Like, we all want to be right, guys. Let's just admit that. Like, come on. It doesn't feel good to be wrong. And we have to be willing to be wrong, but it doesn't feel good. We want to be right. And sometimes we forget that it's more important to have the truth and love each other than it is to be right. Because like a lot of times, we are so firmly planted in our idea of what we think is right. And we think, our idea has to be right because we have all this evidence. So obviously we are right and enough trustworthy sources to back up our side of the argument that we actually convince ourselves that we have the right to call each other stupid because obviously they are stupid if they don't agree with us because our sources are right. Right. So sometimes being right could mean so much disconnection and losing friends and fighting 
so hard for your opinion of what's right when you're overlooking the other things that are really important, which is human connection and loving each other and like not being able to step back from your opinion of what is right, no matter how much evidence you think you have, is very like, what is that doing for you? Is that helping you? Like, we need connection with people. We need other people in our life. And if we are isolating ourselves or only being friends with the people that agree with us, how are we growing as human beings if we're unwilling to listen to the other side? So in conclusion to all of this, I just want to remind everybody, including myself, to ask ourselves questions. What purpose does it serve to call other people names? What purpose does it serve to shut down and not be open to another opinion. No matter how ridiculous that other opinion may sound, there is a reason behind what that person believes. And if we are unwilling to get to the bottom of why they believe what they believe, nothing's going to change. So if we're all desiring change in the world, if we're all desiring a happier place to live in. How, what can we do right here, right now to create that? Can we focus more on the things that we do agree on? Can we focus more on the fact that we're all humans? And if all humans come from the, pl- the same place, then somewhere deep inside of us, we all have capability of love. And most importantly, are we all willing to be wrong? It's a really hard thing to be willing to do. But if we are all willing to be wrong, and if we are all willing to step aside from the emotion of our opinion, and listen to another opinion objectively, what kind of beautiful things could we create with that approach? I hope that this has been enlightening and encouraging for all of you guys. I hope that this has been a good reminder when you're seeing something that you don't like or you disagree with to dig deeper. Um, A lot of times we avoid stuff like that And that's okay, too. Sometimes we're just really not ready. Um, I can totally, I've totally done that before and reacted because I took things personally. And sometimes we're just really not ready to hear another opinion. And that's okay, too. But what can we do today to start spreading a little bit more love? What can we do today to love ourselves a little bit more? What can we do today to observe ourselves and see where we get the beliefs that we believe and what can we do today to step back from all the drama and step back from the name calling and things that don't serve anybody what can we do I really hope that you liked this video and I really hope that it helps a lot of you get through this situation. We are all in this together. I really want to encourage you guys. Um, I'm terrible at ending videos, <laughs> so this is just going to be it for me. <laughs> okay, <laughs> goodbye. <laughs>